begin with design thinking process. So it's, uh, I think uh, many of us have heard about design thinking and it's originally came from Ideal, the world's well, most well-known uh, design firm with clients like uh, Apple, uh, Microsoft, etc. And they develop lots of tools about uh, innovation. So I will introduce some of them today. Um, to begin with, uh, let's talk about design thinking. So it's a process of generating uh, the ideas that are practical, fitting the customer needs, and then being like transformative and disrupt the market. So we can fulfill what Jeffrey previously said uh, about the five uh, characteristics of uh, social innovation. So let's begin. So the first, uh, there are five phases, including discovery, interpretation, ideation, uh, experimentation, and evolution. So the first step is about discovery. Um, to discover a problem that you really feel interesting. So have anyone heard about uh, sustainable development goals? If you have heard about it, please type uh, yes on our uh, you know, um, chat. <laughs> so uh, I see someone heard about it, yeah. So, um, and in fact, uh, sustainable development goals is developed by the United Nations with all the member countries uh, to set out, you know, some um, goals that every country should put effort into. Because it's so true that we cannot overcome all the challenges by just having, you know, ourselves individually and no one country can fulfill all this. So we need to act together. So there are 17 goals to transform our world. So here they are. Um, for the first uh, four, I would say it's the basic human rights about, you know, uh, no poverty, hunger, no, no hunger, and then having good health and well-being as well as quality education. And there's also some uh, related um, to uh, equality, including five, gender equality, uh, ten, reduce inequalities, you know, uh, regarding to races, uh, ethnic uh, beliefs, etc. Uh, there's some more uh, about uh, prosperity, including clean water and sanitation, uh, affordable and clean energy, uh, decent work and economic growth. Um, there are also uh, some about uh, cities, you know, uh, innovations, for example, industry innovation and infrastructure, uh, sustainable cities and community, and also responsible consumption and production. Sustainable goals are uh, tied uh, with environment. So number 13 is about climate action, uh, 14 life below water, 15 life on land. It's not only about human being, but about the environment, the animals, you know, all living beings around us. 16 is about, uh, you know, a fair, uh, a just uh, country, as well as a strong, you know, com uh, government. Um, the last one, but not the least, is about partnership for the goals. Um, and many uh, influential organizations have already participated to support uh, is UN uh, SDGs through partnership. And in fact, uh, some of us today, they are, with, they are uh, you know, part of affiliation of organizations that's involved you know, in this. For example, like uh, the Hong Kong uh, Association for uh, Women Professionals, and also uh, like Lions Club, uh, Rotary, ISAC, uh, JCI, etc. So after you discover the problem that you feel uh, passion, you know, passionate about, um, 
you can begin the second part to interpret that. When you look at this photo, what do you feel? So it's about uh, poverty. So you can open your mic to answer uh, if you like. Otherwise, you can also type in the chat. So what is the source? What is the reason for poverty? So let me take a look of the chat, I'll see if anyone responds. So in fact, perhaps we will talk about uh, the system, you know, and uh, perhaps some may talk about is about education, etc. But one person sees differently. Professor Mohammed Yunus. So he actually uh, received the Nobel Peace Prize uh, in 2006, I remember. So um, he, when he sees uh, poverty, he think uh, poor people are actually just lack of opportunities. They are hardworking, they are smart, uh, and they are you know, willing to put into efforts to change their lives. So they, he realized that um, many local communities, they do not have access to financial resources to start their own businesses. So he developed Grameen Bank to uh, lend money to poor people. What uh, ironic was, um, when we think about poor people, they need money most, right? But uh, they don't have uh, uh, credibility to borrow money from the bank. So he asked a bank to you know, actually um, lend money to uh, poor people, but the bank said, no, they don't have uh, credits. How can I you know, give money to them? So he started his own bank, Grameen Bank, which means a village bank, to um, lend money, like small amount to villagers. And he also uh, interpret further um, and he target at women. Because he realized that if uh, women, uh, they got empowered, uh, they found their own business and make a profit, they will reinvest you know, their income, their profits into education to change you know, their children's lives. But for men, from his uh, you know, observation, the men, after they earn money, they would just you know, use it for alcohol or cigarettes, etc. From, so he designed it for Min Bank with a mindset really focused on the beneficiaries to help them. He even started up, you know, a small group, you know, um, uh, um, among the villages. So when they uh, borrow money from the bank, they need to form a small group like five persons. So if A had returned the uh, money, the interest, B then can, you know, borrow the money. So he used this kind of uh, peer you know, uh, support or peer pressure to help uh, this uh, women bank um, to uh, develop the business successfully. In, and in fact, um, the uh, return rate of the interest is like over 90%. It's much higher than the normal bank. So what I just share is also another tool on uh, from ideal value proposition. So when we begin uh, to understand our beneficiary or customer, we can focus on three things. So what they are doing, customer jobs, customer jobs, and, um, and also I will highly recommend you to take at, uh, these two parts. How can you enhance their happiness, you know, gains? And um, how can you help them to relieve their pains? So many, many uh, companies, when they think about innovations, they would just focus on what they, uh, exist, uh, they are currently doing. So uh, they would just you know, further enhance their service or products. So if 100 years ago, if you ask a person, uh, oh, so you want to travel you know, like, uh, better, right, quicker. So what do you want? 
it will answer you, I want a quicker, you know, horse, stronger horse. But he will never come up with the answer, I want a car, because they probably don't happen, you know, seen a car yet. So by changing the perspective from jobs to what they really want, maybe travel more efficiently, or understanding their pain, travel more, you know, uh, less painfully, <laughs> more comfortably. So you can help them to uh, redefine the values, you know, of the service or products they need. And then you can focus on developing on this area. So the third part, um, because of time, we won't go into details, but there are a few ways that you can generate innovations. Instead of using this uh, brainstorming, brainstorming is usually non-structured. You probably will come up with some crazy ideas that can never work, like what Jeffy said, they may not be like practical, but having, you know, fulfilled the first two steps, you already understand the needs of the customers, the beneficiaries. You can use this three ways to generate new ideas. For example, uh, instead of uh, the existing product and service, think of, can we have another way of providing the same values? So came up with new products or services. The second uh, ways is actually new ways of working. So for example, um, perhaps we all know about Uber uh, or like Alibaba, right? Uh, Taobao. So before they came, we only think of like taxis, you know, uh, fun, you know, grab a cab and then jump on it. But Uber, become the phenomenon now to become a matchmaker model between drivers and you know travelers or passengers. Now, when we talk about Uber, we also borrow Uber as a concept. Yeah, like Uber of something, right? Airbnb is Uber of rooms, you know, etc. So define a new ways of working, a new process can help you to, um, you know, uh, find some innovative ideas. Another example is Ford, uh, the car company. Uh, when they, you know, uh, generate this new assembly line, they, they actually get the idea from like meat production company. When they visit the factories, they saw that, oh, wow, this slaughterhouse, you know, the meats can move you know, around um, and then the workers can directly work on just, you know, uh, their part of work to enhance their efficiency. So new ways of working, um, new ways of uh, process. Um, the third one is new business models. So Uber is also another case about uh, business model. Um, and uh, thanks for Jeffrey for sharing, you know, some ideas how to get funding. But now I would like to actually um, highlights one model that I think may be uh, more practical and uh, realistic for all of us here. So let's think about customer fund model. So you make something, uh, customer pay for it. Uh, if you make a pre-order form, so you create an image of the product and put on web and then if people are interested they will, you know, pre-order that. So they will pay you to make, you know, this product. Uh, for example, like Kickstarter, right? So the fundraising uh, uh, platform, people can submit ideas and they will, you know, raise fund. Um, and if they have uh, raised enough fund, they will make the products. There's no risk in this area. So I highly recommend you think about this kind of pre-order, like customer fund model when you think about your social innovation idea. So, ideation. So one example I would like to uh, share with uh, all of us here is about Tom Shoes. So, so now they have already uh, deviated a bit you know, from the original model, but the original model is uh, um, when you buy you know, one pair of shoes, 
they will actually donate one pair of shoes to underprivileged, you know, around the world. And that can help them to, you know, generate uh, uh, more awareness about their brand. And at the same time, because the production of shoes are in, you know, those uh, communities, the community will also support them. So this new way of uh, buy one, donate one, um, is a new model. And you can think about this kind of uh, like giving experience because our generation, uh, people are more uh, concerned about uh, social issues and environmental issues. Try to come up with this kind of idea. So the last two parts, I will group them together, experimentation and evolution. It's a continuous process. So many people, uh, when they think about uh, innovation, they think, okay, it's the original idea. Actually, it's not. Um, and in fact, uh, like what Phoenix Foundation is promoting, we promote people try, and then sometimes we fail, but we get up and rise again. So ideation, uh, believe me, the first idea may not work sometimes, but it's important step for you to make the first step. Otherwise you won't have the second step. You know, can you say that, oh, let's, let us just skip the first step and take the second step. We can't, we can never do it. So it's exactly how design, working, uh, design thinking works. So we need to keep on experimenting. So one example is Dyson. Um, do you know how many times they have prototyped before they succeed to make this, uh, you know, uh, amazing uh, vacuum cleaner? Let's guess. <laughs> How many times? Okay, so here's the answer. 5,000 times, more than 5,000 times before they succeed. So can you imagine that at the 5,126 uh, times, they said, okay, we got enough, let's like stop, yeah. If they stop, they will never succeed. So the uh, belief, the spirits of keep on experimenting, learning, failing and get up and then rise again. It's very important to hold on. Yeah, until you really succeed. So I highly recommend this book uh, if you want to know more about innovation. It's also from ideal. Uh, so it, it talked about 10 phases of innovation, actually 10 types of um, working style, I would say, um, to find innovative ideas. So that's all uh, for the innovation, uh, social innovation uh, bootcamp. Now, I would like to talk about, you know, the next part. So, um, in the coming 24 hours, you all will be grouped into uh, uh, a group of uh, three persons. Um, so the theme is to come up with to come up with some project idea to address any issues under COVID-19. And thanks, uh, Jeffrey, for already giving up uh, some insights and tips. So the format is any digital format. So uh, you will send you know your file. It can be a, a video link, a PowerPoint or a work document, um, and please uh, send to uh, becky.phoenix2020 at uh, gmail.com. And I highly recommend you to take you know, a photo of this uh, screen so that you can get the uh, email right. Um, the deadline is by noon tomorrow. Of course, you can submit earlier. Um, and in case you have any inquiries, um, and you can uh, WhatsApp uh, Becky with this number. Yeah, so take uh, this screenshot. So Becky, is everything's um, you know correct now, right? Yes. Yeah, the information is correct. Okay. Yeah. So. So that's all for my part. 
So now, um,